Welcome back to my channel. Do you want to install Mac OS on your non-Apple system? Then you have come to the exact right place, because today I will tell you guys a step-by-step -step guide on how you can install Mac OS using OpenCore on any system. So without wasting any time, let's head towards the video. Welcome to my channel, Technicio. So I have made a Word document for all of you in which I have written the entire process step by step and everything has its attached link so that it is easy for you to download all the files and you will get its link in the description. So our first step is to download the OpenCore Simplify tool and create an EFI folder through it. So I will click on the link and it will automatically take us to the source file and here I will click on code and download all these files as a zip file. And after the download is complete, I will open the destination folder and extract it, which I have already done. So I will open it and open the batch file as an administrator. I will get the first message that Python is not in my system. So do I wanna download and install it? Because without Python, this file cannot work. So I will type Y and press enter. So it will download and install Python. And after installation, it will automatically close. So I will reopen it. And after configuration, it will open. So first, I will create a hardware report by typing 1. And it will investigate our system and create a hardware report. So I will type E to export the report. Here you will get to see all the specifications of the system. Like I am using an i7 7th generation CPU. So I will press Enter and it will ask me to select a Mac OS version and will also suggest which one is best for my system. But I will choose one version lower, meaning Monterey, so that the OS can run smoothly. So I will type 21 and press enter. Now I can build the EFI folder, but I will first customize the kexts. Kexts act like drivers in open core, meaning if you wanna add any function in Mac OS, then you add a kext in its OC folder. So from here, I will add the kext for the Wi-Fi card from the Wi-Fi category, and from the Ethernet category, I will add the option for USB tethering because my system does not have an Ethernet cable attached. I use a Wi-Fi USB card. So I will add kext 15 and 34. So I will type 15 comma 34 and press enter. And now those two kext files are selected. So I will now go back and type 6 to build the EFI folder. And after building, it will ask me if I want to open the containing folder. So I will type agree. But here it will also mention USB mapping. Because after installation, this causes a lot of problems that macOS does not detect USBs. So we will do that in the next step. For now I type agree, and then I will cut the EFI folder and paste it on the desktop. So now we will move to the next step which is USB mapping, so that after installation, Mac OS keeps the USB ports enabled and we can use them. So I will open the link for the USB mapping tool here. And from here, I will download the windows.exe file. And now I will open it. Here you will get the first option, discover ports. So I will type D and discover the ports. So it will detect our ports and list them and whichever ports are active at this time will already be green. So I will go back and choose the select ports and build kext option. But here there is a problem that after installation only the ports that are active and selected right now will work, meaning the rest of the ports will remain disabled. So to avoid this problem, I will select all the ports so that every port on my system can be used. So I will type A and select all, and then build the kext file. And now I will close it. I will copy the recently created USB mapping folder. And on the desktop, I will open the EFI folder that we created. And then open the OC folder, and in it, in the kexts folder, I will paste this folder. And here, the USB toolbox kext folder that was already present, I will delete it so that I can paste the latest version's kext folder here. Now we move to the next step, in which we need to download the latest kext file for USB toolbox. So I will open the link, and from here, download the zip file. After downloading, I will extract it, and from inside it, I will copy the USB toolbox kext folder. 
and paste it in our EFI folder's kext folder. Next step, we need to download the OpenCore auxiliary tool so that we can modify our config file. So I will click on this link, and from this website, I will download the zip file for the OpenCore auxiliary tool. And after the download is complete, I will extract it. And now from this folder, I will open the OCA tool. After the software opens, I will locate and open the config file, which is inside our EFI folder, inside the OC folder. After loading, I will choose the kernel option from the side menu. And here we will get to see all the kext files. First, I will delete the USB toolbox file and add it again, so I can choose the new pasted folder. And now I will click on plus and also add the USB mapping kext folder. And this way my kext files become 14. And now I will save it and close it. Next, we will need the image file for our desired Mac OS, but we will get it as a raw file because this is the best for OpenCore without any errors. So the link I have given here will give you all the image files for Mac OS, meaning every version, like I need Monterey. So I will choose Monterey from here and it will take me to a new website. From here, I will get link. Then I will skip the ad and subscription plans will appear in front of me. But at the bottom, I will also get a free option. But right now it is telling me to wait for one hour. Then I can download the file for free. But this time limit does not come every time. Sometimes the file starts downloading immediately. I have already downloaded the file as you can see. So I will close this and move to the next step, which is to download the Bellina Etcher tool, which is a boot maker like Rufus but Rufus does not make a proper boot for raw files. So I will download Belina Etcher through this link. After the download is complete, I will open it. And first of all, I will plug in my USB drive and then choose the raw file. It will automatically select my USB drive. So I will just click flash and allow it. So my USB will start becoming bootable. Balan Etcher will first flash the USB, then verify it. After the process completes, our USB will be bootable. Next step, we will need a disk management tool. So I have used Minitool Partition Wizard here because its free version will get our work done. So I will click on the link and download the software. And after the download is complete, I will open it and install it. After installation is complete, I will launch it. And here you will also get my USB drive. First, I will reconnect it so that no error occurs. So here you will also get the EFI partition on the USB drive. Here we will assign it a drive letter any and click apply. And where you want to do the installation, meaning in which partition or drive, you can format it and give it a name. Like, I want to install it in this 500 gigabyte free partition. So now I will close the software. And if I try to open the EFI partition through File Explorer, I will get a permission error. For the solution to this problem, we go to the next step. So in the last step, we get the link for the Explorer++ tool. Clicking on it, I will download the 64-bit version. After the download is complete, I will extract it. And then from the extracted folder, I will launch the software. And through this software, you can also open the EFI partition. So I will open it and I will delete all the files that are in it. And then I will copy the EFI folder from the desktop and paste it in this EFI partition. And with this, our USB is ready for installation. So now we will restart the system and first we will go into the BIOS and disable fast boot and secure boot so that no issue comes during installation. And then boot from the USB drive and the bootloader will appear in front of us where we will get options for Windows, install Mac OS Monterey, and reset NVRAM. So I will choose the installation option. So the setup will start loading. And after loading, first, 
We will get the option to choose the language, so I will choose English language. And next, four options will appear in front of us. So first, I will go into Disk Utility. And here, I will first choose the Show All Devices option, so that all partitions appear in front of me. And now, I will select that same partition that I prepared for installation, the 500 gigabyte one, and choose the Erase option and choose its format APFS, meaning Apple File System, and name it Mac OS and erase it. After the process successfully completes, I will close Disk Utility. And now I will choose the Install Mac OS Monterey option. Click Continue, and then Agree to the license agreements. And now it will ask me to select the setup drive, so I will select the recently configured partition and start the installation. I will open the installer log from the window tab above so that if any error comes, I will know. And from here, we also get to know how far the setup has reached. This process will take some time and during installation, the system will automatically restart many times. But we have to boot from the USB each time and choose the installed Mac OS from the bootloader each time, not the installation option again. After three to four restarts, the Mac OS installation will be complete and the welcome screen will appear in front of us. After post-installation configuration, our Mac OS is successfully installed and ready to use. But right now, it will not boot without the USB. So to solve that problem, I will open the Safari browser. But for that, I need the internet. As I told you, I use a Wi-Fi dongle which is not detected in Mac OS. That is why I had enabled the USB tethering option. So I will connect my mobile to the system and turn on USB tethering. And the network will appear on my Mac OS. So now I will open the Safari browser. But if you get any issue in the browser, then go to Software Update. And there, in the Additional Updates section, you will get an update for Safari. Update it, and every Safari-related problem will be solved. After opening Safari, I will open Google and search for OC Auxiliary Tool. And from the GitHub website, open its latest version and download the DMG file. After the download is complete, I will open it, but due to security reasons, it will not open. So I will go to Settings and open Security and Privacy Settings. And here at the bottom, I will see that error which caused it to be blocked. So I will open anyway, and the tool will open. Here we will get the ESP mount option. I will click it and mount the disk. Now, if I open Finder, I will see the EFI partition here. But this is the Windows EFI partition. So I will copy the OC folder into it so that the system can also boot through it. But you will have to manually add this boot option for it to boot. My system does not have the option to manually add a boot. So in my next video, I will give you a proper solution for this so that your boot issue is resolved. Is your system booting into Mac OS or not? Be sure to tell me in the comments section and if you have any issue during installation, you can ask me in the comments section. So don't miss my next video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Technicio, and hit the bell icon so that you'll never miss an update from our channel. Together, let's end tech tantrums. Thank you.